When you think of the word custom, usually what comes to mind is some riced out piece of junk car on Craigslist or something and everything is custom. Custom this, custom that. Usually it's a car covered in Bondo or poorly choiced mods. Everything with my car, I tried to do in the proper term, custom. I try to make things as custom as I can be. It's not so much custom like, oh, I'm trying to be unique and all this stuff, but really, I try not to buy things for my car, especially if they're just bolt-on, unless I can't make it myself. And that's kind of been a, a little nitpicky thing of why I, I take so long to build my cars because I don't want to just like max out a credit card, build a car and then go, oh yeah, you know, it's, it's done, all right? You know, it's, I try to be a little creative. In doing so, my car takes forever. You know, everything is not perfect. I, you know, I've redone probably this engine bay four times since I've owned it, and I'm still not done with it. I am kind of at a point of where I'm okay with it, but it, it's fine for now. So, custom is definitely an interesting word, and custom is going to be today's project. So, if you like this video, comment, subscribe down below. Go ahead and hit that little bell icon to let you guys know every time I do post a video. I am trying to post at a consistent schedule of at least one video a month right now. I'm gonna try to bump it up and maybe try something new with this video and make it like a two-parter or something. So, if you guys like that, absolutely let me know down in the comments, you know, and if you like these little cliffhangers, let me know. So, see what today's activities are about. Oh. Today, we're actually gonna work on the Datsun. I, I have some stuff I wanna do. I wanna cut the trans tunnel today. I need to cut out this section of my trans tunnel so that way I can actually get a proper reading of the front of the differential to find out if I got the right angle to get the working hills correct between the end of the tail shaft and the differential itself. Unfortunately, I do have to not cut all of this out because the drive shafts can go through it anyways, but we'll make a new one when it comes to that time. Let's get to it. New day again. Got a couple things to do today. I want to cut out my spare tub well. It's useless. All it's been doing is collecting garbage and junk for the past, I don't know, probably 10 years. And also, it'll give me better access to the differential. I've been wanting to get that squared away for kind of a while, and I think cutting this out is actually gonna help me a lot. I gotta get the fuel tank out because I gotta see how far back I gotta cut. So today we're gonna cut this out. Also, we're gonna try a new angle today, see if we like this uh, type of filming. Oh, okay, so we gotta get all this garbage out of here today. I think what I'm gonna do is kinda get this major stuff right here out, throw in the trash, because it's mostly useless. Actually, I think it's all useless. Yeah, there's nothing in here I think worth saving. Crappy old hardware. I have a million of these bolts from doing coilovers over the years. Yeah, let's just toss this. Let's toss all this. Boop -a -doo, boop -a -doo. Okay, this old guy can get out of here now. And this pile of crap. We're not gonna put the battery in the trunk anymore so this actually can all come out. Watch it be a 13. It's a 13, watch, ready? 13, yep, 13. Ugh. 14. It's not 13 either. Dang it. a little bit of fuel in there. Yeah, that's a little worrisome. Yeah, there's still lots of fuel in there. This is for the evaporation line for the fuel tank. This guy, 
I'll probably use, I don't know. I still have to decide if I still want to use a factory tank or if I actually want to go aftermarket. I probably should go aftermarket, like with an actual proper fuel cell, but I think for now, I'm gonna use the factory tank because it's just gonna be a lot easier to get this swap going and started. But we'll see. Screw this, this is all rotted anyways. Make sure that I have fuel cans. In there. Put it in here. All right, let's see how much of this I can spill on the floor. Let's see how much of it I can actually get in the gas can. I got most of it out when I first drained the tank. Okay, so now that we got the fuel tank out of here, we actually have a lot of room to work with, and I actually really want to trim all this guy out and get it completely out of the trunk. And I think I'm gonna cut across here. I think I'm gonna follow like this imaginary line right here, and then follow the bottom or the top edge of this over like so. Do the same thing over there. Because I really want to get rid of this. I, I don't use it, it collects dirt and dust, and I mean, it's solid. Maybe I'll just give it to somebody. But mine's all dented up, it doesn't even fit spare tire anymore. I'll just cut it out. I don't need it. It's useless to me. This car's never gonna be a show car or a daily ever again. So, so let's get cutting. Well, I trimmed it. I lost the footage, but I trimmed it. So that was awesome. We got cut out. You know, this is all taken care of, and now I wanna mess with the differential and get the angles correct so now we can go from there. See how much more room I have? It's so pretty. Okay, you're actually recording this time? All right, good. Jesus, that sucked. Lost a lot of footage there. Wasn't too happy about that. I'm gonna cut a hole. The other pieces over there. Somewhere. Over the rainbow. Somewhere. Anyways, so let's get back to what we were doing, which is a 17 mil. <laughs> I'm only using a crescent because I'm way too lazy to grab the uh, proper wrench. Even though it took me two seconds to do that. Okay. So. Okay. So here's the earth. He's chilling. Okay, I should grab the proper wrench. I should stop being lazy. He's a loser. Haha, <clears throat> <clears throat> it's 17 as well. Sweet. And of course. Let's get this. I'm pretty sure the differential slotted, like as in the mustache bar is slotted. I think, I think. I probably shouldn't think. No, I'm just looking at the whole car. All right, plan, plan B. Huh, that's weird. That dropped that down a lot. Like a lot, a lot. Like I'm kind of worried a lot. Like I wonder if the cross member's been fighting it. I might have to modify my mustache bar. I want to check something. Go like this. Dude, the whole cross. Okay, well, I guess it is a soft mount, so that makes sense. I wonder. I should measure the diff right now. Okay. So, as of right now, we have eh, two degrees. I have the crank position set to 85.6, so we'll check that again. 87.6. That makes sense. The two degrees from the car, like this, 87.6. Okay. The differential needs to be at 87.6. Really close to it. If that says it is. So that's 87.8. So, okay, so that means that I actually need to. So that means I actually need to make a giant spacer. <clears throat> which sucks. That means this whole thing is a drop down. Oh, this is poopy. Okay, I figured out what exactly I'm gonna do. I have been sitting here in my little trunk of freedom, thought. I don't know. I think I figured out how I'm gonna tackle this. So my differential needed to be tilted back a couple degrees. But when doing so, uh, after figuring out how it needed to be done and everything and which way it needed to move and getting the measurements, it, I realized that the back end needed to come down about half an inch, which doesn't sound like much. But when your car is as slammed as I am, that half inch matters. It's gonna hit the ground. The differential itself is gonna hit the ground as well as the fact that it's gonna bring the axles themselves down as well. So sitting there, I was like, man, do I wanna do an entire cross member section? 
function and bring the entire cross memory differential up. I sat there and thought about it for about an hour. Finally figured out that I think I can get away with just modifying the existing cross member for this differential. Because it seems pretty easy, at least like the layout of the tabs and everything. I was like, well, I could easily modify it and actually bring the differential itself up. Cross member leave it alone so that way with it being slim, you know, my wheels are still camera and everything, but at least my axles will be more straight lined when it is slim. And I think that's what we're gonna do. So right now I'm actually gonna start cutting up all the sheet metal so we can get a better view of what's going on and it'll be easier for me to fabricate the new rear cross member. So let's get to it. So what I think I'm gonna do, thinking I can actually modify, chop off this top, chop this off, and bring up this whole chingus. About two inches, three inches? If I can get two or three inches out of this, I think it'd be solid. And I think it doesn't matter because if I have to notch this frame rail, it doesn't really matter too much, considering the fact that it's chopped right here. <laughs> By one of the previous owners, way before me, they chopped out this whole section. This guy right here as well as over here. Cause they had like some solid axle or something in here. And so this thing is far from original as can be and it's far from ever going to be original again. Not super worried about it. I mean, kind of is what it is. But at least I think I can notch all this out and restructure it and re-weld it and modify it and probably notch this guy a little more over, straighten out this line so I have a little more room on this side and bring this whole guy up. I really just wanted to kind of trim all this up because tomorrow, I think that's gonna be the plan is start placing out where I'm gonna, or how I'm gonna do this. So, we'll see you tomorrow. So in the long process of taking off the wheels, I kind of found something interesting. There's some sort of like carcasses of larva or something embedded in the tread. I mean, the car sat for a little bit at my dad's house up north in Sacramento. So I have no idea what it is or what they were. I mean, none of them are alive, so it's kind of like the important part, I guess, but definitely interesting as I was peeling the wheels off. But unfortunately, when I did that, I found a bunch of spider webs and stuff in here from the car sitting and under here, see those and I have just a trick for them. Be right back.
now that I have the entire rear crossbar out of the car, the next step is for me to actually sit here and plan out exactly how am I gonna cut this rear crossbar and move these mounting points up roughly about three inches. Should be ideal when the car is slammed that the axles will actually be straight again or close to it. Even if they're down a little bit, that's a lot better than, you know, the 45 degree angle that they were before. I'm gonna think about this for the night. I'm actually gonna kind of go through and look at this more thoroughly. And I think tomorrow is when we're gonna start cutting this up and figuring out what's the best approach for this. So, we'll see you tomorrow. So after a night of pondering on how I'm gonna fabricate this differential up, we're gonna cut this entire section out on the top, basically just from here all the way to here, all the way down to this material right here. Cut it out all around here, and actually bring it up a couple of inches, and then re-weld it and fabricate it like a new housing. And first step is I have to actually strip down the cross member because I think it's gonna be a million times easier for me to work on it on the workbench rather than on the floor. So let's get to it. So now that we have the cross member all disassembled, we can now take a better look at it and see what's going on as far as what we're gonna be dealing with. These pieces aren't straight, which I actually didn't know. After we remove these pieces from the main cross member, I think we're gonna have to modify them and flatten them out so I can actually make the piece that's gonna hold it above. So I think from now, I'm gonna take some measurements, write them down, start making a blueprint, and then maybe tonight or maybe tomorrow, we'll start actually cutting this up and getting it ready, so. all cut up and shaved down and cleaned up and ready for us to kind of take a look and see what we need to do. I think the next step is going to be, I think the placement's gonna be roughly there. So the difference is gonna be that much higher than it was before, which is roughly three and a half inches. I mean, I'm kind of eyeballing it right now. With it being three and a half inches, when my control arms are actually compressed all the way at its lowest setting, the axle should be relatively flat, if not maybe point up just a little bit, but nothing compared to what it was before, which is dang near at a 45 degree angle. And these old axles really aren't good for much of anything anymore and they will get upgraded eventually i think probably just get the swap running and driving and kind of just you know baby steps and cruising and tuned and all that stuff like lightly tuned and then eventually i'll upgrade you know the differential and stuff like that i actually am completely okay with upgrading the differential to an r200 which i actually have back there i have an r200 but i need some other parts to get it to work with my setup so i'm not quite doing that right now but for right now, I need to trim all this up, kind of clean it all up, and kind of get ready. I'm gonna take it where I want it to be, and then from there, I think I'm gonna set all the angles and do all the nerdy calculations and stuff, which is kind of boring, it's a lot of tedious work. And from there, we'll start building a piece to surround it and block out the giant gap underneath, as well as it'll support this piece itself. So, um, I think I'm gonna call it a night. Uh, we got a lot of progress done, and I think we'll continue this on later. So, <laughs> real quick, I want to give a huge shout out to you guys and all of you supporters out there, new subscribers and everything. If you guys like this video, please let me know down in the comments. I really just want to give a big shout out and thank you to all of you for the support that you've been giving me. I know we just hit 150 subscribers, which may not sound like a lot, but to me, it's a big deal. And without you guys, I wouldn't have the motivation or the push and drive to finish working on my car. Stay tuned for part two uh, that will be coming out hopefully a lot sooner than the gap between this video and the last one. So let me, once again, thank you guys for the support. Love you guys and I'll uh, see you on the next one. <laughs> Later.